This segment we're going to talk about this song called Chilled Vanilla, which is also what I've been called before as Chilled Vanilla. Anyway, but uh, this chord progression is a little bit unusual because there's a lot of a lot of chord changes in it, and they're not your usual chord changes like two fives that you would find in a uh, jazz progression. Um, so let's just start at the beginning of the progression, and the first two chords in the song are um, uh, D minor seven and C major seven. And then it goes down a half step to B major seven, and then to B flat major seven with a sharp 11. So those are kind of unorthodox chord changes. So oftentimes, like in the studio, if I um, get a progression like this, I try to create some kind of melody or something that's gonna go over, because these are, it's kind of hard to improvise with these changes right off the fly. Um, but what I basically approach is I try to get something melodic, which kind of covers chord tones again, the first two chords, and then when it went to the B major 7, I just played a fast flurry of like a major 7 run. Uh, and I targeted the high E natural because in the next chord coming up, the B flat, the B flat uh, Lydian sound, that is the sharp 11. So that's kind of a note that I was targeting at the end of my run. So it was kind of a sheet of sound I was going for um, to end on the E note. And it basically just did a legato E running through a B major 7 Ionian scale and landing on the, the E because that's the nice note in the next chord. So that would be a part that I would work out, something similar to that, uh, have kind of pivot points or little target notes to kind of head for. Um, and then after that point, the, the, the A section of the song, the main section, is just D minor 7 and C major 7. And the difficult part here is that oftentimes in school, when you learn how to improvise over chord changes, they'll give you, you'll learn where the two chords come from. In this case, it's D minor 7 and C major 7. So it's all from the key of C major. So you would think, that's a no-brainer. I can just play C major stuff. True, but the problem we run into sometimes with tonal centers is that if I'm playing a C major scale, 
That fourth note, the F, might sound great on the D minor chord, but it's not going to sound so great. It's not going to be your choicest note on the C chord. So for that reason, again, I'm kind of thinking two separate modes. I'm thinking D Ionian, I'm sorry, I'm thinking D Dorian over the D minor chord and C Ionian. So therefore not to really target or land on that F natural on the C. That's kind of important. And it's once again goes back to my theory of like when you play over chord changes, uh, play chord tones and try to best you can learn the individual modes for the chords. Um, continuing on through the song, there's one section that I'm a little familiar with because it's similar to something I did with Gino Vanelli where the chords move kind of parallel motion where it goes It's a nice little change but it's a little bit difficult to improvise to but the way I think about it the first two chords D minor and E minor 7 are both in the key of C so I'm thinking pretty much D minor through both of these chords and then on the next measure that's when I'm changing keys, a, uh, a modal change there, to F Dorian. Because F Dorian's, if you were in F Dorian, it means E flat major, which means E flat major, F Dorian, G Phrygian. Follow me so far? So what I'm doing is first two chords, G minor for both of them, or C major for both of them, D minor for both of them. And then when it changes to F minor, I'm thinking F minor for these next two chords, because we just kind of change to the key of E flat, pretty much. F Dorian for both of those. And then connecting to another chord that's not really related, A major 7. And that's just a matter of like, once again, just seeing and targeting a chord tone. In this case, I went, um, I played up the F minor. I'm sorry. I played something in D minor still because I was already in D minor. I jumped to F Dorian. And then I, there's my jump off point where I went through to the A major, I hit the B natural on the A, since it's an A major 9, it's a nice chord tone to land on. Moving on, when it goes to the B minor 7 flat 5, well, you have many options then. A minor 7 flat 5 could be the Locrian mode in the key, in this case, in the key of, um, of um, C sharp major. I'm sorry. <laughs> it could be like in the key of B major or C sharp Dorian, or you could also think C sharp melodic minor. That's a nice jazzy scale that works really nice. B minor seven flat five being the seventh mode, being the sixth mode. I'm sorry, of of C sharp melodic minor. Boom 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 boom. boom. It's kind of a jazzier little approach because you have that one note different than uh, major harmony. And then on the E flat, seven with a flat nine, I know my altered scale pretty well, which is from melodic minor. So I'm thinking E flat, e flat altered scale or E melodic minor. But in this case, I'm just thinking the mode E flat altered, which resolves really easily back to A flat major seven. Follow me on all that? So you have choices. Some guys would think like A flat uh, uh, harmonic minor as well. Uh, And then you have to change keys when you get to the major resolution, of course. So that's pretty much it. And then it goes back to the intro chords again. And then A at the end, the solo I just played on the A sus chord, I actually altered it up a little bit because that's, that's a nice sound going to a D minor chord. Even though the chord is not altered, I can still treat it as one. sounds really nice going back to the D minor. So that's Chill Vanilla, but once again, this is a hard song. I mean, it's, um, there are some places in the take I just did that I would like to punch in here and there just to smooth out, but that's generally the approach that I would take to soloing over these, uh, this chord progression. It's a difficult one, but it's fun. <laughs>